You guys ready? Excellent. Okay. So we're going to do the ge geologic history of San Francisco using rock, papers, and scissors as an added bonus. Chocolate. <laughs> so um, I'm going to be using several volunteers to come up here and help me out over here. But um, I am open for any questions, so you can kind of interrupt me um, if, you want to, if you want me to clarify stuff. But we're going to cover the birth of the rocks of San Francisco and work, all our way, uh, work our way to the present day where the rocks are implanted here in San Francisco. And um, <clears throat> we're going to start with our paper, oh by the way, which was cut with the scissors. That's where the, that was a, the scissors made a cameo appearance at the beginning. <laughs> so if you were here several minutes ago, you would have seen the scissors in action. Um, so, how many of you have heard of plate tectonics? Excellent. Okay, well, we're going to go back over 200 million years, but I have a quick video done by a woman uh, in Santa Barbara, UC Santa Barbara, and she has a bit of going back 80 million years, and this is what the middle of the Pacific looked like in North America, and that red line is called a spreading center. It's where the ocean was ripping apart. Did you guys see that? Yeah, one more time if I can. So you'll notice the ocean is ripping apart down by the equator. It's moving up towards uh, North America. And actually that spreading center actually hits North America. And that's where we are present day. So to represent that, we're going to have our pieces of paper right here. These are going to represent the ocean and the ocean floor spreading apart right here. Does that make sense? Oh, and I have two volunteers over here that are going to help me pull the ocean apart. we got Gail and Darren. They're going to slowly pull the ocean apart. When are you guys coming over here? This is the bottom of the ocean. And just like a scab, when you have a scab and the scab rips open, it fills with, uh, unfortunately, uh, my son grows with blood and it hardens and you might rip it open again and fills with blood and it rips open some more maybe. That's my childhood. Um, but um, over here, when the earth rips apart, it gets filled up with uh, magma when it cools into a rock uh, on the bottom of the ocean. But uh, I found that using real magma might be a little bit um, um, challenging up here. Um, so we're going to use some chocolate instead. Um, and I was actually going to inject it from the bottom, but to save uh, um, any thinking ability, I'm actually just going to pour it in from the top. So this is, and we're going to pull this thing really slowly apart. So this is the magma that comes in, and it actually gets pulled apart slowly. And you can actually do this quite a bit. Ooh, yeah. So the stuff comes up, you can pull a little bit farther, a little bit faster, not too much faster. So this chocolate comes up through the crack over there. Oh, a little faster. Okay, stop, stop, stop. So it turns out this stuff comes up through the crack in the middle of the ocean and actually fills it in with chocolate or actually basalt. And this is actually the most common rock on the surface of the earth. The interesting thing is that most of this rock is covered over by the ocean, so you don't see it. It really wasn't until several tens of years ago that we actually realized that this was actually the most common rock on the um, earth. This is oceanic crust. Ooh, that's probably good enough right there. And this is what covers the bottom of the ocean. Ooh, I have some left for later tonight. Um, but uh, these, Gale and Darren, are pulling the ocean apart, but it turns out that these pull just a little bit more. These things, and you can stop right there, these things actually get pulled apart and move away from each other about as fast as their fingernails grow. So these things actually move a few centimeters per year, one direction or the other. Um, and uh, the interesting thing is this is not happening off the coast of California now, but 200 million years ago it was, <coughs> in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, uh, this was happening, and it turns out the rocks around here were born in a spreading center in the middle of the ocean. Not only that, but this spreading center where our rocks are from, were from around near the equator. So you guys are living on rocks that were born in the middle of the ocean by the equator. Go figure. Thank you very much. I'm done. That's it. That's, uh, I can't handle it. So what also turns out, let's get some more, let's get a couple of volunteers. You guys want to come up? Come on. You can, you, know, you can stand on, uh, actually stand on this side with me. Okay, do we get, can we get someone else up here? Come on up. So it turns out that uh, one of you guys stand right here, right in a row. 
Put your hands right over here. It turns out that this is all below sea level. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to pass this around later. This is basalt. This is the type of rock that was born, you, you, can, you can rest them if you want. This is the type of rock that was born in the spreading centers, this basalt rock. And I will pass this around and you guys can look at it. And it actually turns out that this rock over here is made in these spreading centers. And let's see if I can get this video to play. And it comes out <coughs> something looking like this when it hits the seawater. It spills out. This is actually from Hawaii. This is the salt being pushed out by Hawaii. Someone captured the videos of this one. But this is the way it actually happens to spreading centers too. And it makes these weird kind of toothpaste tube structures. And it turns out that when these toothpaste tube structures, which are made of blazingly hot um, rocks, they actually flow over one another and flow over one another. And um, if you can actually cut through them, like over here on Highway 101, um, near the Rainbow Tunnel, for some reason somebody had to stop with the emergency lights on and look at these things. I don't know who that was. Um, so this is the hill of assaults that are off of Highway 101 that you can actually see right on the freeway, right when you get on the other side of the Rainbow Tunnel. These were made on the ocean floor, basalts, hill of assaults. Okay, so these rocks were made in the, under the ocean, kilometers of water above it, but you know what's in the ocean at the top? There's life over there. And it turns out that by the equator, nice and sunny, there's animals that live up on the top, pl planktonic life. And it turns out there's a certain kind of planktonic of light, uh, when you put your hands up, called radiolarian. Hold on, you can squeeze it. And so we're gonna use flower, actually you could use, you could use two hands on that one. Okay, and you can use uh, two hands over here. All right, we need more, 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 more. So these guys are having, oh, let me put some more of the salt over here. So you're gonna slowly pull this over here, and you're gonna put your hand on top of this. So these guys are living over here, put your hand right on top, on top, and then slowly let this stuff die. Oh, more, more basalt. Come on. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you can actually just sprinkle it on there, let this stuff die and fall down over there, okay? Okay, does that make sense? So these guys, you could stop. You know, actually, you can pour, pour all of that on there. Just keep going, just jump it all in there. So these critters are in the, on the uh, ocean surface or near the ocean surface and they live in and then they die and they sink to the bottom of the ocean. It turns out that these critters, called radiolaria, they look when they down to the bottom of the ocean. It turns out that there's lots of critters in the ocean that are swimming around and die and fall in the bottom of the ocean. Some of them have calcium-based shells like clams and mussels and, and, and that, kind of, that kind of material. But it turns out these things are made out of a silica material that can fall deeper and farther and still exist and not dissolve and they get to the bottom of the ocean. So here's a question for you guys. As this thing is moving this way, brand new rock here, right? So where's the rock going to be oldest? We can actually stop. Where's the rock going to be oldest? Down that way because it was born and moved off to the side, right? So this is brand new rock and this is going to be youngest. Where's going to be the thickest deposits of the radiolarian? We have one, one boat over here. What else? Other, uh, this side or this side? Thickest deposits of the radiolarian. So remember, they're all dying all over the place. Well, uh, actually, so it turns out that you might get some dying over here, and you'll get some over here, but the ones that died over here get covered by these guys, which get covered by those guys, get covered by those guys. So they start getting thicker and thicker as you get closer and closer to the uh, shore. And remember, this thing is moving about as fast as your fingernails grow. So these deposits get reasonably thick, and it turns out that here in San Francisco, these deposits <coughs> are 100 meters thick of these dead critters. So here in San Francisco, when you run into these things, you might see them, here's Corona Heights. Those dead critters are on Corona Heights. Yeah, uh, they're over by Twin Peaks. They're all over the place. This happens to be in Marin. So this radiolarian shirt, and that's what it's called when it turns into a rock in the radiolaria, um, it's 100 meters thick in this area. And it took about 100 million years to go from here to the other side. So 200 million years to 100 million years ago, these guys were living in the ocean, dying and falling to the bottom. So 100 million years worth of time, 100, 100 meters thick. You guys know how long it takes these things to accumulate on the bottom? Anybody? Anybody go to the math? 100 million years, 100 meters? Okay, I'll give it to you. It's one millimeter per thousand years.